Hi, my name is Renee Gillespie and I'm with Pumpkin Town Primitives. My husband David and I do paper marbling and I'd like to share with you a little bit about how that's done and some of the items that are marbleized and what we do with this ancient historic craft. Paper marbling was primarily used on books. Um, the marbling that we know today is very different from how marbling originated using inks that were floated on top of water. The shapes were very almost abstract um, and today they're much more controlled and precise. Um, here I have two examples. Um, a book that was covered with marbled paper. This is a traditional marble pattern and you'll see the um, shapes that simulate stone. This book is from 1782 and was bound with marbled paper. This book, also an original, has um, a peacock pattern, you can see, and then some leather in the binding on the front cover. This is an engraving from Diderot's Encyclopedia from the 1760s, and I really uh, like to use this to show how marbling was done historically. Although in this engraving you see all of the apprentices working in one room, that is not how it would have been done. They were separated because the um, paper marbling was a very guarded secret, and so the apprentice did not know every stage of the process of paper marbling. So we'd like to start with this first gentleman over here who is grinding paint pigments. Today we can use watercolor, oil, and acrylic paints to do marbling. Traditionally um, it would have been a gouache or watercolor base marbling. The pigments are natural pigments like this lapis that I have here. You can see that it's very finely ground. Um, this would be mixed with a muller, and this is a glass muller, and you can see the gentleman using his hands to push down with the muller and grind the pigments paint. into The paint was then put into these little pots. So here we have a little paint pot modeled after those that you saw in the Diderot's engraving. And this is a broom straw brush. In the 18th century, this literally would have been made out of straw that was bundled with some twine. And this is used to disperse the paint on top of the liquid solution called carrageenan. This gentleman is mixing through a sieve the carrageenan. That is a dried out seaweed. Um, it's a food grade thickener that's used to thicken sauces and yogurts and ice creams, um, but it serves as a thick liquid to splatter the paints on top of. So in this picture over here, you'll see this gentleman splattering the paint with the broom straw brush into this tray that is filled with the carrageenan liquid. So the paints float on top of the liquid. After the paints are splattered onto the liquid, then the paints are stirred. You use a stir stick, which can be any mm. pointed object, and it goes into the paint and back and forth to stir the colors. And that process is called gelgit, which in Turkish means back and forth. After you've stirred all the colors, then you use what's called a comb. And you can see these are very sharp points um, that go through those colors that you've just stirred and you manipulate it very slowly through 
to create um, a, a pattern that's called nonpareil. These are some other tools that you can use depending on what pattern you wish to create. Um, this is a double rake which does the beloved peacock pattern and this is a single rake which um, produces the French curl. After the design is created with the combs and rakes, then the paper is actually printed. You can see the paper bowed. It's laid on top of the paint and the paint adheres to the paper. After the paper is printed, then it's rinsed. So the excess carrageenan is rinsed off and then it's hung on these lines to dry. After the papers are dried, they're waxed. So after they're waxed, then they're polished. The wax would help to seal in the watercolor, which um, would be soluble if water dripped on the cover of the book. After the pages are waxed, then they're folded and ready to be put into a book. Another process is called end marbling. So instead of doing a sheet of paper, you actually do the edges of the book block. This is an example of end marbling, where the edges of the book are marbled. After this is finished, the book is then covered. So this is a book block and does not have a cover on it yet. The inside end pages are also marbled. So you may find marbling on the inside end pages, on the edges, or on the cover of a book. These are some of our marbled papers from Pumpkin Town Primitives. We have smaller sheets and we have larger sheets available for purchase. You can see a link below. Historically, marbling was done on paper, like um, this little bookmark that we sell, um, but you can also marble on other objects. Um, this is a little cardboard uh, box, and in it you can see um, this marbled silk. Um, we marble silk scarves for sale, so you can marble on fabric, you can marble on leather, this is a little card holder. You can marble on wood. So these are little wood pieces that I like to make jewelry out of. We'll put a link below for you to purchase the scarves if you're interested. So we hope that this has inspired you to take a look closer at what you find on bookshelves for marbled paper and also that you would be inspired um, to look into this ancient art of marbling. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them and also please like or subscribe so that you can see more of our videos from Pumpkin Town Primitives.